Welcome everybody. Today we are going to work on creating particles that travel to their final destination, which is the outline of a skeletal mesh. So we are going to use the uh, smooth lerp mechanism with inside of Niagara to do this. And uh, let's get right into it. So the first thing uh, I'm going to point out here is you can see that as the triangle is spinning, this point is generating the particles and then they are smoothly transitioning to their final location where then they go ahead and die. So we are going to basically figure out how we're going to update this spawn position using a vector parameter to the Niagara system. And then I'm going to show you how to go from the spawn location to the location around the mesh. So let's get right into this. The first thing I'm going to show you is we have a standard Niagara emitter. And I tell you, this emitter Let me open this back up again. Okay, yeah, I had to restart it so that the uh, uh, emitter would uh, resume its simulation. I think they're still working out a few bugs here, so uh, you always have to be a little patient. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this is basically um, an emitter that is generating a particle we're using a sprite renderer so this just uses the default sprite material all of this is just the default stuff and um, if we look at initialized particle I just changed the lifetime from uh, about one and a half to seconds to eight seconds the color is just the base and you can adjust the sprite size to however big you would like it to be. Uh, that's all pretty basic stuff. The real exciting part comes when um, you see this mesh project. Now this is a uh, Niagara script that I wrote. So let's go look at that first. This is kind of the heart of the script. So this is a Niagara module script. So I'm going to open this up and you've seen this in my last video. I showed you this uh, same uh, script, but there's a, a couple small differences that you'll see here. So um, obviously you set your module usage to just use it on the particle spawn and it's a module. You can set the category called default and you always want to mark exposed to library. So that that's important. Now getting into this, so the first thing we did is created a map get node here. And um, so if you drag this off, yeah, parameter map. So you want to do uh, parameter map get, right? Same thing. That's what this is right here. And in the parameter map get, I added, uh, you add things by clicking on the plus. And what I did here is I added a skeletal mesh type and I just called it mesh. Um, from the skeletal mesh, you can drag out one of two nodes. One is called random triangle and one is called random tricord or coordinate. What we're doing in this script is we are getting the skeletal mesh and we're choosing a random uh, triangle or a random triangle coordinate from that. Now, random triangle will be affected by the vertice density within, or the vertex density within the mesh. Whereas this will try to more evenly distribute a random sampling. So <clears throat> what this is doing is choosing a random uh, point along the skin of the mesh. Once we choose that, um, you need to use this get random info. 
I went over this in my last video, but choose get random info, choose deterministic, and plug this into one of these two nodes. And the output of both of these is a coordinate. So I could easily do this if I want the density of the vertices to affect the, uh, the mesh particles, or I can use this one which distributes them. I'll show you the difference of this in a little bit. Then what you do is you call get skin triangle data world space. And that's going to get the position of that point on the mesh. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna store this. So if you drag this up to here, you can store this and I store it under particles projected position. Now you can call this whatever you want, but basically I'm just storing this in I'm not updating the particle position itself. I'm just storing this calculated value. And then that finishes our output module. So the reason we did that was, let me go back to our, let me go back to our emitter. So in the particle initialization, when it spawns, for each particle, we're gonna calculate a random point on our mesh and we are going to store that position in a field called projected position, okay? Then the, we're gonna actually set the particle position to a user uh, parameter called origin. So I created, you just do user and then I did a vector. So if you scroll down, you just do vector, that's a vector three, and I called it origin. So the particles are all gonna spawn at the origin initially. And then in our particle update, here is the big thing. In the particle update, we are going to set the particle position. And we're gonna update it throughout the lifetime of the particle. And we're gonna do that using this function here. So this is called, so first off, if you wanna do set particles position, you scroll all the way to the bottom and do set new or existing parameter directly. And then up here, you would choose set specific parameters and choose particles. And in this case, I chose particles position, right? Then what you do is you choose smooth lerp over time vector. So rather than the default position in here, you would type smooth, yep, and just type SM, and that'll pull up smooth lerp over time vector. And what this is doing is it is going to, yeah, it's going to transition its position from, and, and I'll show you this in just one second, from the particles position, that is your smooth value. So that's where you start, and the target is going to be the particles projected position. So we start down here, if you look at the diagram here, we start down here by his feet, and that's the smooth value position, right? That was set right here in the set particles position using the origin. And that origin was passed in by, the, uh, by a blueprint. I'll show you that in a minute. So we spawn the particle here, and then wherever the, the projected position is for that, it's going to slowly travel or quickly, depending on how long it has to get there and how far away it is, it's gonna travel from there to its final position and then die, right? So we go from smooth value to target position. And what I was doing with the curve here is, let me take this back to the default value. The convergence rate is how quickly it's going to be traveling to its destination position. So if you look at it now, it's traveling at this speed. If I up the convergence rate to eight times that, you see it's going very quickly now. So you can change this to however you like. For right now, um, you could leave it at, 
a, a single value like this or what I did was I created a curve so you go to dynamic inputs and you go to float from curve and then I just changed this I went down here and then I went up here just drag it up here and so now it's gonna start off slow and then speed up if you want you can even um, click this curve button right here come down here and click your start curve and choose cubic interpolation for automatic tangents and that gives it a little bit more of a smooth transition and if you want to do even more you can have it be really slow and then speed up by adding another key here so I could add another key let me grab these handles I'm gonna turn this down a little bit like this so now we're gonna really go slow and then speed up right at the end so you can see how that's kind of looking right now so let me save all that com compile apply and save and so then that covers what we're doing so we use our script to generate a projected position then during the update we are lerping smoothly between our current position and our target position and we're doing that using a convergence rate which is driven by a curve so we go slow at the beginning and then fast at the end now depending if your particle how long it lives your particle may not live to meet its final destination so now let me switch back to our demo here and what you can see is the particles are spawning and they're moving kind of quickly to get down there and you can almost see the outline but it's not quite there yet so what you can do is you can either make your particles live a little longer or you can speed them up I'm going to make them live a little longer I'm gonna go back to our particle initialization and I am going to I'm going to up the uh, age of these items instead of eight seconds I'm gonna go to 12 seconds I'm gonna do compile apply save and then we'll go back and look and now let's see if our particles are going to be making it to their final destination but I think I'm gonna make the particles die a little bit quicker and move down a little bit faster it's just too many particles on the screen for me so this is the part where you just kinda of have to play with it yeah so I'm gonna make them live only for about six seconds and I'm gonna speed them up quite a bit and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna to do to do that one cool thing down here is this changes the you know we're going from 0 to 1 but down here you have a scale curve and this just multiplies the curve by this number so if you want to speed it up like twice as fast or two and a half times you just up the curve number so now when I do this compile apply come back and now let's look at it you see how quickly they're traveling down so that using that scale curve it really helps things um, because you can just create your curve with the thought of having it go from 0 to 1 and then if you want to scale it up and multiply it you do this so that's really about it everybody I hope you enjoyed today's uh, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial it's a super neat effect you can do all sorts of stuff with it and um, Oh, wait a minute. I haven't shown you. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't show you how I set the uh, the blueprint. Okay, here is the blueprint, which is controlling the rotating pyramid 
and the particle system that we were looking at. So this blueprint in the event begin play, we call a timeline which goes from zero to one over five seconds and it is marked looping. Okay. And we kick off that timeline to play. We take its output, multiply it by 360 to do the rotation and we set the relative rotation on our static mesh, which is our triangle, okay? And then I just set a material on the triangle. So that gets our triangle spinning. Now on the triangle itself, if I pull this up, I just modified the default triangle. If I pull this up, I created a socket on the triangle static mesh you do that by doing create socket and giving it a name and you can adjust where it is located on the mesh and I call that socket origin. Going back to our materialize, so we have a rotating socket now, you can ignore all that other stuff. Then in the event tick of that blueprint, I take our Niagara system, so you, you do add component, Niagara particle system, you set down here your Ni Niagara particle system that you created from your emitter, okay? If you don't know how to do that, you can look it up or post a comment in the questions. And then every tick that comes by, I'm setting a Niagara variable called origin. Now, if you remember, Back in my emitter, I created a variable called origin right here, okay? So that's the one that we're setting. And with the location that I'm setting it to, remember that is a vector, is the static mesh, the socket location of the socket called origin, right? So that is this socket right down here. So what we're doing is, as that's rotating around, I'm grabbing the location of the socket in world space at that moment in time, setting it on our Niagara system, and then the Niagara system is going to spawn our particles at that location, and then they will travel from that location to their projected location on our static mesh. And remember, the static mesh Location is being set here in the mesh project class that we wrote, the script that we wrote. So um, that, that really is it. So once again, Unreal is just amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, not as short as I was hoping tutorial, but I like to be complete because the it can get confusing. I just wanted to say thanks to all the new subscribers I've been receiving lately. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe for more. Thanks.